Hello and welcome to this Tuts Plus series Tumblr Theming 101. In this video we're going to make a start on creating the markup for our sidebar. Now as mentioned we are going to split the theme design into two specific elements. The side element and the main element. Again if you don't want to or you don't agree with the usage of the HTML5 tags um, feel free to just use a div and then classes. So if we go back to our base code, now underneath the body, what I'll do is quickly just type in the aside, and then, if possible, we've got room, Let's see how well this turns out. And, okay, so, here's our aside and here is um, the markup for the aside. Now as you can see the first thing we have is our portrait photo. Now as per the demonstration we did we know that we can get the portrait photo using the variable named portrait URL hyphen and then whatever number um, relates to the size we want. Now, if I remember correctly, I think it's 96 pixels by 96 pixels, but I'll just double check. Oh, it's the 128 by 128. So we're going to use this um, variable, portrait URL hyphen 128. Now, remember, this will only return the URL, so we need to include our image, and then we need to include our portrait uh, URL variable. Okay, so that is the image. Um, again, if you want, you can put in an out, um, and you can use the title. So that will basically give us the out, uh, the um, the blog title for our out tag on the image. Okay, so back to the design, and as you can see. Underneath this, we have a heading called About. We have our description. Then we have something called Pages. And then we have our Twitter feed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a H5 for the headings in the sidebar. So put in About. And then again, we're going to have a paragraph with our description in. Now again, this relates back to what I've said in the last few videos. A Tumblr theme isn't this isn't too far away from a static HTML page, and the actual HTML structure is practically the same. You're just using the Tumblr theme operators to include content or manipulate how that structure is presented. So if we go back to the documentation and we scroll up, and we'll see that the description, the variable name description gives us a description of your blog. So we'll go back to the code and put in our description variable. There we go. Okay, so back to the design. Okay, so underneath this, we then have pages. Now, Tumblr has this little feature called pages. Now, Tumblr pages are pretty much what it says in the tin. They offer you to, they allow you to create a custom page that is unrelated to your posts and has its, it lives on its own URL. So for the example, if I go back, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to include a page. Can we go there, pages? Right, so I've already got one included, but I'll include another. So if we click add page, Okay, so what we're going to do for this, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use a standard layout because we want to use the theme layout. And what a page will do is it will basically use the post, the text post type, and push this content into it. So this is the URL for the page. So it'll be your Tumblr URL, and then um, a path after that. And we're going to put in. Now, pages are pretty useful, like on some of my themes, 
um, users will set up an about page. So rather than having like the description that on the actual index page or the permalink page, they'll specifically set up an about page to house their description, etc. So we're going to show a link to this page. Um, and that will be the title for the link. Pages have a few different options. Um, I think this one's because it's already set up, but you can actually use pages as a redirect. So you can almost create like a custom URL. Um, on my themes, I actually use one called documentation, which links to a server that contains the documentation for a theme. So it doesn't actually have to use the pages function. It can be used as a redirect, which is pretty cool. Again, I'll cover this um, later on in the video. It'll probably be in the tips video, uh, but we'll go over that again. So just let's put some content in. We're not gonna worry about pages for the time being. and then create the page, okay? And then you can see the page has gone into the pages section. So what we want to do is we want to print or create markup for these two pages so that the user can get them. Now, underneath my pages title, I've said we're gonna have an archive link, a learn more link, and then a submit link. So what we would have here is we'd have a redirect to the archive section of our Tumblr. We would have a custom page called learn more, and then we would have a redirect link to the submit section on our uh, Tumblr. So if we go to the documentation, now pages always confuses me because it's in a, a little bit of a strange place. Um, it might be under, Navigation? Nope. It's not actually listed um, anywhere you would actually think. Uh, I know the tag at the very, there we go. All right, so here's pages. So pages have the following blocks or variables. We have one called has pages, rendered if you'd have defined any custom pages. So this is acting like a check. And what this will do is it will say, if this blog has pages, do something inside. And then this will um, render for each custom page. So the way I see the markup is we would do the following. We would do a UL, because everyone likes to do lists as ULLI. And then we would do a list item. And then inside that we'd have an anchor and then we'd have some sort of title. Now, if we look back at the documentation, I'm just gonna see if I can just uh, get stuff out of the screen. There we go. So if we have a look back at the documentation, we would like to include a block has page. Now, I would put the title in there as well because there's no point including a title unless there's actually content to go with that. And again, let's do that with the description. So we know that in the basic variables, um, we can test for the description. Um, again, it's up there. So block description, and then we're gonna push the description in there. So let's test for the description first. So there, and then. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to include our portrait image or portrait photo here. Then we are going to say, let's test for a description. And if there is a description, return a H5 with the phrase about inside of it, and then return a paragraph with the description included inside. And then that's the close. And then again, we're going to do the same. If this blog has pages, return a title with the pages, and then we are going to return the markup for the pages. I'm just gonna cheat again. Okay, so there's our pages. So what we're going to do is we're going to let Tumblr generate the 
markup for our pages list, our list of pages. Rather than creating like the three list items here, what we can do is we can actually loop through the pages. So if we do block pages, similar to how we did the block posts um, a few videos back. Okay. So what we're saying is if this Tumblr account has the has pay, custom pages set up, we want to include a heading with pages and then we're going to include a unordered list. Now for each of our custom pages, we want to return the following markup. We want to return an LI with an anchor inside. And then that anchor will be populated with the following variables. Now the variable named URL will give us the URL for the page. So it will be um, yourtumblr.com forward slash another custom page or test, etc. And then the label. Now the label is the text we set for the page. Now if you remember, if we just go here quickly. So this will be the URL that's returned and this will be the label. Okay. So I'll quickly go back and then we're just going to do and then we're just going to include the label inside. Okay, so that is, if I remember correctly, the photo, the about, and the page is done. Now, I missed something here, but basically we need to include our title underneath because this is actually a title of the blog. Now, again, because it's a blog title, straight up H1. Again, preference, if you feel differently, use what you want. We already know that the blocked name title, if it's not inside the block posts or the block text, will return the blog title. So there is that. Now, it's worth mentioning about indentation. Um, obviously, um, indentation is important when you're creating your markup. When this theme is actually returned, or when this HTML is returned by Tumblr, anything that is related to the theme operators, so blocks and variables, will not be there. So any variable will be turned into content and any block will be removed. So when I first started creating themes, I was indenting here. Like so, because it was inside a block. But the problem I had is that when the content was actually returned, it was being returned like that. And there shouldn't be an indentation level here because it's all inside this parent element. So indent based on your HTML markup, not uh, based on your theme operators. Okay. And that for the time being is as far as we'll go on the aside. We will do the Twitter feed later because it is JavaScript and I have a special video reserved for that, um, which makes it sound more awesome than it actually is. So we're going to save that and save your HTML file and then I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to paste that into the HTML editor. And I'm just going to click update preview and then go back to the appearance. And as you can see, we now have our markup, we have our title, we have our about and then we have our description. Now, if you really need to, um, you can mimic the description. Just have to bear with me a moment. I'm not there. Uh, I'm actually not using Photoshop as much anymore. Um, that's a conversation for another day. Okay, and then click save. So there we have it. There is our markup for our aside or our sidebar. So the next thing I'm going to work on is the main element, which will be in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you will join me in the next one.